Okay, so the situation is you're new to Crusader Kings 3, or maybe you simply haven't played in a while, and you are eager to start painting the map, and you're looking at, you know, like all this stuff, and you're thinking, what is all this? How do I even begin? Maybe you just unpause the game, right, and see what happens, and I know that's very tempting, but I'm here to say, do not do that. Instead, do these things first. That said, you have found yourself at the edge of casual. This is Verso, and as always, these are my opinions. It's just how I play, and your mileage may, probably will vary. So first things first, decide your lifestyle focus, like how stable do you expect your rain to be, for example. It's largely a matter of preference what you select here, but let's just quickly run down some of the options, or all of the options. Diplomacy, for example, is a very mixed bag for me, but defensive negotiations which does allow you to make one defensive alliance without blood ties, is more or less ingrained into my playstyle and I will not go without it. Martial contains so much good stuff in here for rapid border expansion, or even just simply pure survival that I almost think every new leader should start with it. Organized March is almost a must-have perk from this tree, and I always take it. Stewardship seems to me to be for more stable empires, and it's not much use in the early years of a particularly precarious game start, but some people do swear by it. Intrigue is one that I also don't use a lot, but Torturer can be fun, very fun, in fact, particularly for keeping ambitious vassals in line. Nobody ever rebels against a leader of whom they are terrified, take it from me. Learning is one that I don't really get, but maybe if you're going for a religious domination type victory, I could see it. Whole of Body is a tree that I like a little bit later in the game in order to eke a few more years of life out of a successful leader, so sometimes I do go into that one. It is ideal if you can match your lifestyle to your character's educational background so that you can accrue lifestyle experience faster, but it's not absolutely essential. You don't have to do it at all if you don't want to. After this, you'll want to check out your council, which might be okay as is, but is more than likely mediocre to terrible. So keep in mind that anybody that you fire right now today will hate you for a long time. That's especially problematic if you fire one of your vassals, Anybody else, just probably try to lose anybody whose pertinent skill is less than 10. If you're feeling more ambitious, then maybe 12. Check if you have any courtiers on hand who can fill these roles, but if not, just note which council members can't currently be replaced and replace them later when you can. Note that you usually can't replace religious council members in most religions, so just hope that whomever you get is not absolutely horrible. While here, you might want to think about council tasks as well. For example, I like to immediately start using my marshal to improve my champions, that's just how I roll. Check your court next, and there are a variety of roles here that you can fill, but the only one that desperately needs filling is your court physician. The court physician can be either male or female, so look for somebody with good aptitude if you've got them, or at least a high learning stat. Physicians can kind of grow into the roles a bit, so just know that. Moving on from that, check your champions, or knights, or whatever your civilization is currently calling them. If there's somebody in your kingdom that you cannot afford to lose, like your sole heir, you should probably forbid that person from being a champion. Probably as well forbid anybody with terrible prowess from fighting, so at least you know where you stand numbers-wise. Knights are absolutely your most important military units as far as I'm concerned, so you need to field as many as you possibly can, and they all need to be solid beasts. With that said, you sort of know where you stand now, so it's time to start bringing in some new blood. You can start by checking your court and seeing if you have any guests on hand. Some of them can be pretty decent and can be hired on the cheap early on. After that, you probably want to move on to marrying people. So I like to prioritize marriages, getting younger people into my court, people who can produce more children in their lifetimes. But it's not essential, sometimes you don't have that option. Take the best you can get. It's good if new courtiers do like you, but it's not the end of the world if they're just a little bit disgruntled. Eventually, they'll probably come around. A tip for me is you should consider sorting by the sum of skills, even when you're looking for prowess, because you might be able to find somebody who can actually fill multiple roles and perhaps make a worthy vassal down the line. Also, when marrying off women, be sure to take that metro the needle box, or you will send your female courtier to another court. Also, probably take this opportunity to understand why your own courtiers or your vassals might currently dislike you. Usually it's owing to a short reign penalty, which does decay, but there might be other reasons that you need to address. And if you really need to, you can invite champions as a decision or even start a search for a court physician, but hopefully you get everybody that you need through marriages. Moving on, personal preference here, but tutor every child in your court. Any child who has already shown a predilection for a learning style should be given an educational focus and a guardian who excels in that pertinent stat. Preferably the guardian also has high learning. You can and probably should wait on this one actually until all of the marriage is complete and you've got a full court. 
Okay, almost done. Do note this tutorial is sort of assuming an earlier, probably tribal start, more warfare based. And you don't have to play that game. I find it more exciting in the early game, so that's how my mind is skewed right now. With that said, now is a good time to really start assessing your neighbors, sizing up the alpha dogs, figuring out who's most vulnerable, etc. Border expansion is going to be the name of the game early on, so use the information that the game provides you about military composition. See what men at arms others are fielding and try to have counters for them. And remember that you're usually not just fighting one chief or whatever, you'll be fighting any allies that they have as well. And some of those alliances might form after you unpause, so you know, just stay on top of that. Oh, and by the way, lest I forget, get married. The decision may have already been made for you, but if not, obviously in the early game you're going to want to prioritize strong alliances preferably with somebody in your immediate neighborhood who could realistically send a supporting force your way when called. Also, don't forget that your spouse does sit on your council and can provide nice stat bonuses to you, either across the board or focusing on a specific stat where you might have a weakness. Positive congenital traits are really nice if you can get them, but as with any other decision in this game, beggars cannot be choosers, so take what you can get. Sometimes you're going to have to marry a little girl and there's nothing for it. If you've already got an heir, however, maybe marrying an older woman isn't a bad idea. One thing I will suggest though is try not to hit your wagon to an alliance that is going to be more trouble than it's worth. Like somebody who has a lot of enemies and does not have a good military. And finally, I think you're pretty much good to go. So here's where you can start scheming. You might have to start by swaying your religious council member, since they usually hate new rulers, but if not, you can start swaying any neighbors that you might want to buddy up to later on. Depending upon whether you're a feudal, it might also not be too early to start using your religious council member to fabricate a claim on whatever you think will be your first conquest. Remember though that you have to pay for those eventually. <laughs> I've forgotten in the past. There's no shame in it. It's okay if it happens. I think that gets you to a place where you can unpause the game and just start letting the chips fall where they may. In some cases, these games really are sort of won or lost by the decisions you make in the first days, so it's good to get as much of this busy work taken care of as possible. And if for whatever reason you'd like to see more of this in action, I do have a Let's Play style video on this very channel in which I go into this with the Chiefdom of Chervin, so check it out. Or, you know, just ask questions in the comment section below. Maybe I or somebody smarter than me can answer them. Any kind of engagement makes my day. It's also literally the only way anybody will ever find this video. So if something here helped you, a simple thumbs up really does make a huge difference. And in the meantime, this has been Verso. Thanks so much for coming out to the Edge of Casual with me. Everybody out there, have a great day.